the angel upon the tombstone said he has risen just as he said quickly now go tell his disciples that Jesus Christ is no longer dead joy to
Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. See the place where they laid him? Now go and tell his disciples that he is going before you. Amen? And every day, every Sunday like this for 2,000 years, all the church has greeted each other this way. And I know you were all saying, Happy Easter, Happy Easter. But that's not what the church says. You know what the church says? That's right. One of us shouts, the Lord is risen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there it goes. The Lord is risen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once a year, there it goes. Are you ready for this, David? Let's do this. Christ the Lord is risen risen today sons of men and angels say raise your joys triumphs high hallelujah sing ye heaven and earth reply Hallelujah Lives again our glorious King Hallelujah Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting Once he died, our souls to save. Hallelujah. With thy victory, boasting grave. Hallelujah. Love's redeeming work is done. Fought the fight, the battle's won. Hallelujah. And death in vain forbids him rise. Hallelujah. Christ hath opened paradise. Hallelujah. So we now with Christ has led Hallelujah Following our exalted head Hallelujah Made like Him, in Him we rise Hallelujah as across the grave, the sky, hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. He is good. He is good. Amen. Christ has risen. Indeed. Amen. If you're not alive and filled with joy this morning, there's something wrong with your joy filler. We need to feel that. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Some days I climb the mountains. Some days I touch the clouds. Some days, oh, my best friend is a cold, hard ground. There's mercy new each morning, comfort through the night. My eyes are fixed on Jesus. I'm gonna be alright. I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Hallelujah feeling and it won't let go. I've been born again. Yes and amen. No matter what comes, I know I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, just because it's raining doesn't mean the sun won't shine. 
There's a season for the struggle and a season for the prize. My hope is never ending because it's anchored in the truth. My father goes before me and his joy will see me through. I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Got that hallelujah feeling and it won't let go. I've been born again, yes and amen. No matter what comes, I know I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When everything is shaking, got that solid ground like pavement. I might bend, but I'm not breaking. I know who's on my side. When everything is shaking, got that solid rock like pavement. I might bend, but I'm not breaking. The Lord is on my side. Got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. Got that hallelujah feeling and it won't let go. I've been born again, yes and amen. No matter what comes, I know I got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul. I've got that hallelujah feeling and it won't let go. I've been born again, yes and amen. No matter what comes, I know I've got that hallelujah feeling down in my soul hallelujah hallelujah amen amen pastor jim you may be seated Well, it's more than a special morning for one reason. Can I say that? Amen. This morning, I asked uh, Madison Crum got got uh, saved a number of months ago. I think it was January the seventh, if memory serves. But I'm not good with dates. So she decided. I said to her, "When do you want to get baptized?" She said, "How about uh, Easter Sunday?" So we're going to do that. Is that all right with you? Amen. Let me tell you what's going to happen, just so we're all on the same page together. If you're visiting with us and, and you're not sure what's happening, that's okay. There's other people with you, trust me. Here's what Romans says. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to live any longer therein? Know ye not that... So that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, we were buried with him in baptism into death, that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of God, we should also be raised and walk in newness of life. So today you're going to hear a testimony that Christ has come into the life of a young woman and her sins are forgiven and forgotten by God who will one day judge everybody. This baptism is a, wit is a witness. It has nothing to do with her salvation. If she's not already saved, she's going in dry, coming out wet, and that's all that happened. <laughs> but if Christ has come into her life, then it changes in place. Amen? Amen? Then it's all good news. And what happened to you, because so many of you in this room this morning, is going to happen to her. And the grace of God and the love of God will surround her and carry her as it has from this day forward. Amen? Amen? Someone who has not confessed Christ doesn't need to be baptized. But God says, if you love me, do what I say. And Jesus said these words, repent, notice the order, and be baptized. Don't mess it up. Repent and be baptized. Some people want to get baptized and then repent later. That's not how this works. First you repent, and then you get baptized. And I'm confident that this young lady 
has done that. Baptism is an outward sign that an inward work has been done. When we do this, I always compare it to a wedding. You can get engaged anywhere. I got engaged on the Skyway, holding a cup of Tim Hortons coffee, fumbling to try and find a ring that I'd been looking for all day. <laughs> just how it went, finally got my hands on the thing, bless God. It's just how it happened. You can get engaged anywhere. But the wedding for most of us was a, a, a ceremony done in front of family and friends, yes? And Madison today is going from engagement to the wedding. Amen. The symbol and sign that she is about to have done to her, because she asked me to, she will go down into the water symbolizing her past life and leaving it behind, her sin and all that went with it. And she will rise as Christ did, as we celebrated already this morning, to new life and new hope. It's a symbol and a sign that she's part of the family Amen. and that she has joined the body of Christ and wants to be known as such. I asked her if she had a few words and she's got her phone out. She's ready. <laughs> Come on, Madison. Madison Crum, ladies and gentlemen. Should be on. You're good. Before I found Christ, I lived a life full of sin. Now that I have found him, I have changed my ways and repented for those sins. I believe that Jesus is my Savior and made the decision to follow him for the rest of my life so I can experience God's mercy and grace. Romans 6.23 is a verse that really sticks with me. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So I'm taking the steps of obedience and being baptized. Amen. 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 Thank you, dear. Okay, now you got to give me a minute to get my Superman suit on and get in, all right? <laughs> and so, uh, Dave, can you can you take care of them? Take care of them for a minute. Amen. I'll be right back. Just give me a minute. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom. In all the ways of man You were here before the world began Above all kingdoms Above all Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucified laid behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all crucified and crucified and laid behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all oh like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me Above all, isn't it great? Madison is privileged to have family join her this morning. Mom, stepmom, and dad, and the others, and all the others are there. They all are waving at you. 
And so welcome you to the house this morning, and uh, wow, is this one amazing young lady. And I especially like the motorcycle helmet, may I just say. <laughs> Although I was told that her father kind of chuckled at the scooter instead of the... <laughs> My brother's got a Harley, he chuckles too. <laughs> but uh, we're going to baptize Madison now. I'm going to get rid of this microphone because it and water don't agree, all right? <laughs> Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give, and I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all, and I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, and all. To Jesus I surrender humbly at His feet I bow Worldly pleasures all forsaken Take me Jesus, take me now I surrender all, I surrender all, I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. If you're here this morning and you just need some prayer. We have this little routine, and these guys want to pray for you. Just step out from where you are and just come on up, and they did love to pray with you. How many believe that Jesus is in the house and Jesus answers prayer? We serve a risen Savior. Power to heal, power to bring solutions into our lives. It's amazing, isn't it? He is amazing. If you need prayer this morning, just come on up. And all to Jesus, just stand with me this morning. May to Him I freely give. I will ever trust and lust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, and all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, I surrender all. And I surrender all. And I surrender all. And all to Thee, my, oh my blessed Savior, I surrender. How many know he's our living hope? Amen. 
And how great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written oh jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross is spoken the cross has spoken I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, I live in oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Oh, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning. That sealed the promise Your buried body Began to breathe, amen Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave Has no claim on Then came the morning Then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion it declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours oh jesus yours is the victory Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Oh, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope Oh, oh, 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, lift your voice to him this morning. Amen, Lord. Thank you, we can be found in your house today, oh God. You are a good God. You are a good God. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Let's wait on the Lord this morning. You may have not walked up to the front for prayer, but God can meet you exactly where you are exactly where you're seated, exactly where you're standing. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. He became sin who knew no sin we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing and Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Manuel, the rescue for sin. The ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body, the bread. His blood, the wine, broken and poured out, oh, for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. The ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, and all our hope is in you, Lord. All our hope is in you. All I hope is in you. All the glory to you, God. The light of the world. 
Jesus Messiah, sing it to him today. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from hell. Oh, Jesus, Messiah, oh, Lord of all, Jesus, Messiah, Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. Pastor Jim. That'll help, I guess. Actually, it only helps with people on the internet because I don't need that thing and you know it. <laughs> yeah, after we're done praying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Madison, would you come? Would your, would, if you want to come and while we pray with her family, you come. If you dare. I don't bite. Okay, I'm scary as all get out, but I mean, I, I don't bite. Uncle Paul says, come on. Come on, guys. That's it. Don't leave the poor girl alone. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good stuff. Still alive. Good, good, good. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your hand on Madison's shoulder if you can reach it. Come on, young lady. Come over this side because then you can get right in front of Owen and nobody will see him. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ask God's blessing on this young lady for the rest of her life. That's it. You're doing it. Wow. Well, I hope so. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful what you've, for what you have done in Madison's life. Blessed with a family, blessed with people who support and care about her. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that your grace would surround her, that you would keep her, that you would make her strong, that you would turn her into the person that you've always dreamed she could become. Give her your strength, give her your joy, give her your wisdom, give her your blessing. Let the joy of the Lord be her strength as she continues forward. Let your blessing be upon this family now in the name of Jesus. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Done like dinner. There it is. No, I dinner you didn't get dinner yet? I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> I'll let mom take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul says no chocolate <laughs> yeah 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 some of, the, some of the downfalls of modern life thank you my dear well Pastor Mick is freezing in Edmonton this morning and you're in southern Ontario and you are glad amen God bless him everyone <laughs> I got to steal one of these from somebody. I'll take this one. Somebody's going to regret it after I'm done. 
The children can slip down to Sunday school now if they want to go, and uh, we welcome you to head out and do what it is that you do. We've got a quick, few quick announcements here. Monday morning is prayer at 10, Wednesday night, Bible study. We're working through the book of Galatians. That's at 7. The ladies are going to start a brand new Bible study in the book of Psalms Thursday night, and they said we want to meet at 6.30. So there it is. It's all laid out in front of you, and uh, we're so grateful for all of their participation. And uh, hopefully you can get into some of those events. I had a PowerPoint advancer. I did, I did. I got you to throw it to me, but I can't catch. Are you glad this morning? Are you rejoicing? Don't answer yes just because I'm standing here. He's listening. He's the one that's asking, and he can see your heart. <laughs> I'm rejoicing too. God is so good, amen? And he blesses us with so many good things. And if you're visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here on this Resurrection Sunday morning. We welcome you and uh, look forward to sharing God's Word now with you. If you've got a Bible, you can find it and open it to John's Gospel, the 20, 20th chapter. Whether you've got a hard copy or whether you're doing one of these cheating like me, go ahead. Find your phone, pull it out. I mean, if you'd like to read the notes, I mean, I can, I can, I can steer this thing, Dave. Aren't you grateful for David and, and for his team this morning? And my wife and a whole crew of people made breakfast for you. Can you say thank you? thank you? We're just so grateful. And then on Friday, Becky helped me out with some with some with some hymns, and I was so grateful. Thank you, Becky. And uh, yeah, it's been a great weekend. And uh, Paul got the tank all ready for Madison, and the electrical went, and the pump wouldn't go. That thing's a jacuzzi, right? You know that. And, and it's, uh, yeah, the pump's off right now. You're right. That's why you can't hear the water shooting. <laughs> and he had to rewire it with uh, DeBio on Saturday so that we could do this today. And so I'm just so grateful because this... You know that a church service is not about the guy who stands here and pontificates, right? It's about all of you pulling what you've got for your weight, whether it's in prayer or participating, however you participate, and this thing comes together. This is not about me. This is about we. I'm not talking about the game either, right? This is about all of us walking and working Together. Well, have you ever stopped to think about how many, many important things in the Bible take place in a garden? Well, if you think about it, the whole thing began in a garden. It's where we messed it all up, right? The interloper came in. The guy from another creation slips into our creation, leads the woman astray, and we're all in trouble. But it all began in a garden. In a garden, we alienated ourselves from God, rebelled, and told him, hey, we can handle this. And you can see, looking around you, that we've done well, or not. Another garden that was in the Bible was the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane was the garden where Jesus fought the greatest battle of his life, and that was to get to the cross. Because he struggled too. He was not anxious for what was about to transpire. In fact, he said to his father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. I mean, let this thing go past me. Can we figure another way? But he ended his prayer, but not what I want, but what you want. And they went through with it. And Hebrews chapter 9 says what Jesus was hanging on the cross by the power of the Holy Spirit. He wasn't hanging there on his own. He had help. And the beauty of it is after the resurrection, which was another garden, you get that same power that he had to endure the challenges of your life. 
This morning we're again in the garden. We're in with the garden tomb with Mary Magdalene. We're going to answer the resurrection question. You said, what's that? Let's read and then we'll talk about it. John's Gospel, are you there? 20th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, and we'll get started. 20th, John chapter 20, are you ready? Here they come. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb with a bunch of other ladies, of course, and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Now, if you read the other Gospels, you'll hear what happened to the other ladies. But if you look in the corner, Mary Magdalene sees the tomb open, and she does a runner. She does not wait to find out what happened. She takes off. Verse 2. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. John, that's how John talks about himself. And said... They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. John's momentary brag. But the other out disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. John says, I outran him. They were both running. He outran Peter he bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. But Simon Peter came along right behind him and went straight into the tomb. No pause with Peter. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the other linen. Finally, the other disciple came in also. And went inside. And he saw and believed. But they still did not understand from the scripture. That Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. And left Mary weeping. Put yourself in Mary's shoes. It's been a pretty rough weekend. She's brokenhearted upon hearing of her Lord's death. She had been there, watched the whole thing take place, anxious, distracted by her grief, all the hopes and dreams that that group of people who had been following Jesus had. In fact, the dreams and expectations of so many who were connected with Jesus in Israel were shattered by his crucifixion three days before. Apparently a grave robbery. That's what she thought. It just intensified all those feelings of pain and despair. It was insult added to injury. Peter and John raced out to the tomb, went back into the city to nurse their pain and deal with their depression. Because John tells us, although they looked, he said, uh, we still didn't understand from the Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. John chapter 20, if you're still there, and I hope you are, slide your finger now down to verse 11. So Mary, the Bible says, stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw there two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I, I don't know where they've put him. At this, the Bible says, she began to turn around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realize it was him. And he said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned towards him and screamed out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. She grabbed him by the knees. <laughs> See? She's there. All you can see is the top of her head. 
And Jesus said, do not hold so tightly. <laughs> There's a word. <laughs> For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene, the Bible says, then went back to the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. And she told him the things he said to her. So Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. What's the resurrection question? Why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Who are you looking for? The resurrection question, who are you looking for? Let's pray. Father, open our eyes afresh to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to understand what it is that you want us to know today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's focus on a couple of things that we can learn from Mary. I think she teaches us three lessons we need to learn in order to get the resurrection message straight. First thing I notice about Mary is that she didn't recognize Jesus because of her grief. She was weeping so much blinded by her tears. Doesn't that happen to us sometimes? Have you ever been there and you're so upset, so overwhelmed that you just, you, I mean, if Jesus himself was standing in front of you, you wouldn't see him. I mean, you are totally overwhelmed in the midst of your circumstances. Because our grief often blinds us to what's going on around us. We miss the lessons life is trying to teach us because we're so occupied with our own pain. At other times, we get the same kind of reaction when we have failed miserably. I know you've never done this. Failed miserably or lost horribly. Counselor tells me that grief is the same whether you lose a family member or a friend or you lose your job. Lose someone near and dear to you, sometimes the dog will set it off. And you just can't see. Our tears and our emotions just overwhelm us. And in the wake of the crisis, we struggle and fail to put our situation into perspective and we say things we mean and some things we don't. One old pastor who'd been through the loss of a spouse explained to me how easily after the death of a loved one our tears or apparent grief often quickly become self-pity. He said it's a real dangerous place to be because rather than grieving the one who has left, We're sitting on our pity pot, grieving the one who had to stay. <laughs> Left behind. We're sad not because they died, but because we're still here. We get sad because a relationship did not go as planned. A job did not work out as we hoped and prayed. So while the painful emotions of grief and loss are real, you got to watch. Because you're not seeing and you're not thinking straight. After a failure of a loss, some days loneliness and that sense of loss is, is so intense for the loved one or the relationship that fell apart or the, the job or whatever it was, especially when it comes unexpectedly. And someone looked at me and said, Where's God when that happens? Oh, that's a good question. Where is God in my pain? Oh, I'll tell you. The Lord is near. The Bible says that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. When life comes apart at the seams, where's God? Oh, I'll tell you where he is. God's right there. Like Mary, we're legitimately blinded by our grief and tears, but it is no trite saying to remind ourselves in those moments where God is. God didn't leave because you got hurt. Where's God when I hurt? 
the Lord is near. Thomas Andrew Dorsey was born in July in 1899 in Georgia. He's known as the father of gospel music. His dad was a minister, his mother a piano teacher. He learned to play the blues as a young man. After studying music formally, he hit the road, started to play in jazz bands, worked for Paramount Records, put together a band for Ma Rainey, started playing out at parties with Barrel House Tom and Texas Tommy, and if you're not a jazz person, you have no idea what I'm talking about. You probably don't even know the 1928 hit tw tight like that. But it's okay. It's real. And it's Tom Dorsey. But at some point he pulls back and he disappears from the jazz scene. Where did Tom go? He started writing something he called gospel music. In fact, he was the first guy that came up with the term. In 1932, as a depressed, out-of-work jazz musician after, after the economic crash of 29, he's trying to eke out a living, struggling with doubt on the brink of abandoning his faith. His first wife died in childbirth along with his son. After months of agony, grieving deeply over his tragic loss, he's ready to ditch God and ditch everybody else. He said, then one day, that voice, that voice came and called me back to life. And I sat in my tears and decided I would sing to God instead of sorrowing. I would choose to love instead of being overcome by bitterness. I decided I would trust instead of doubt. So one afternoon... With a heavy heart, but a strong resolve. We're going to see if the hands will work again this morning. He sat down at the piano and did what he was most famous for. You know the song? Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. Try it once more. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on.
You know, that's what God wants to do with you. You're hurting sitting there right now, and that's what God wants to do. He wants to take your hand. I know that you hurt. I know some of you have been hurt quite badly. I know some of you in this room have very recently lost a loved one or a friend. And I want you to do what Tom Dorsey said and take the hand of the Lord and ask Him to lead you on. You've been down, but let Him help you stand up, would you? You're tired and you're weak and you're worn and yeah, the storm is not over. Grief is not a five-minute process whether you sing the song or not. Through the storm and through the night, Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. We say that because we have a Jesus that understands. The Bible says that he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he wants to take our hand and share our sorrows and lead us to higher ground in the wake of our losses. He stood in the place of weariness of grief. He stood at the grave of a loved one. He does not want us to be blinded by our sorrow, but to remember where God is in the moment of our deepest crisis. Where is God when you hurt? Where is God? He is near. God is near. God's right there. He didn't ditch you. You feel alone. I'm not going to argue with your emotional state. But Jesus is standing right behind Mary. And she doesn't know. She's grieving the loss. And like he did with Tom Dorsey and my wife and I years ago, and many others who've had to swim in deep and turbulent waters of loss, employment, finances, family. God comes with an offer of eternal life. He comes with the power to let good grief, not just grief, good grief reshape us. Help us to fail forward in our struggle rather than fall back during the trial. He will walk with us hand in hand through it all until grieving loss becomes days of anticipation and, rest, and restoration and reunion. Why? Because God promises eternal life to those who receive Him. When my baby died at six days, I cried for a long time and I was mad. I'm glad you weren't here. I came in here and yelled at the top of my voice and shouted till I was hoarse. I was so mad. How could you do this? And it wasn't 15 minutes. It was a year or more before the old guy finally pulled it together. It took a while. But now, now, now my wife and I are in a race to see who can get to heaven first. I still remember my mother-in-law, God bless you, Dad. My father-in-law is having a heart attack. We're at the house. The ambulance is there. And, and I remember this clear as day. I remember mom putting her hand on your chest and said, you're not going anywhere. I get to go first. She said. <laughs> and she did, didn't she, Dad? She beat us all to the finish line. And now we are sorrowful, but we're so filled with hope. Why? Because when you die in Christ, you go back to Father and if you've got a relationship with him, you're going. You see, I, how you know that, preacher? Oh, because another friend of mine by the name of David, he was a king, had a child that died. Watch this now, 2 Samuel 12. 
While the child was alive, I fasted and wept, thinking God might have mercy on me and let the child live. But now that he's dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back now? Watch this now. This is what's on my daughter's grave, if you can find it. I can go to her, but he cannot return to me. She won't be back. But sweetie, I'm coming. (laughs) Why? Because God is a good God. He does good things. The world's full of crap, but we messed this place up. We botched the job. It's not his fault. But he's made a way to take grief and make it into joy. To take sorrow and take you somewhere good. This service isn't about failure and loss. It's about the power of belief in a resurrected Jesus who died, who died and rose from the dead to tell us what he could do for us if we would walk with him. In fact, the Bible declares that God is the God of all hope. Paul writes, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. Joy? Joy is not happy. Joy is the confidence that in the midst of your struggle and trial and trouble, God's in charge. And he said, I make all things work together for what? For good. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can abound in what? That's what God wants for you. In fact, Jesus said to uh, Mary, another Mary, after her brother died, Jesus' friend, his name was Lazarus. Jesus is talking to a different Mary and he says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. You know you can't have a resurrection until you die, right? Okay, long as we're clear on that, because some people seem to think they're going to fix this without it. But anyway, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Can you say yes, Lord? Because if you believe in Christ and he's transformed your life as he has Madison's, My mother-in-law laid upon the bed at home with all the family gathered around and you were all praying and some of you were talking to her and whatever. And the body stayed. And she left. Is she dead? No. She's very much alive. She's someplace else. Here's the thing. God said, I know the way. And so every day, my father-in-law is hoping today's his day. Because there's a door. Isn't there a door? And you're going through it. And Jesus is on the other side of that door. And Andreas and Mom. This is not about sorrow. This is about joy. This is about hope. And if you don't have it, let me just tell you from the perspective of my ancient relatives, I'm Irish, we like to drink and fight. (laughs) You will not find hope at the bottom of a bottle. You will not find hope by beating the snot out of everybody else in sight because you're so frustrated. Hope. Hope comes from God. He's the God of all hope. He's the resurrection and the life. And Mary did not recognize Jesus because of the depth of her grief. And may God give us the grace not to be blinded by our tears, but to recognize in the midst of our tears that God is there and He has not abandoned us. He said, if you seek me... And find me, you will, if you'll search for me with all your heart. God is ready to walk with us and help us see life and hope more clearly.
Because here's the thing. I can't promise you a life without storms. I can't promise you a life without trouble. But I can promise you in Christ a life with hope. I can promise you in Christ a future beyond this life. I can promise you those things because those don't depend on me but on him. Mary didn't recognize Jesus because she was grieving. She didn't recognize Jesus either because she was facing the wrong direction. You notice in the text she had her back turned and she had to turn around. Not just with her eyes. Because the Bible said she turned around and said, where did you put him? She couldn't, still couldn't see. But you can't see if you're facing the wrong direction. And don't we all fall into that snare? Like Mary in the moment, we focus on our defeat. We focus on our loss. And can I say to you, as long as you're preoccupied with your failure or your loss, you will never begin to recognize victory. Martin Luther once spent three days in a deep black depression. Something had gone very, very wrong. On the third day, his wife came down into the little cubby where he'd sequestered himself dressed in black. He looked at her. Who died? God, she said. Luther looked at her. God cannot die. That's ridiculous. And gave her a lecture. He said, why did you think God died? She said, well, you've been acting like it for three days. <laughs> Hello? God not dead. Many of us have been caught in the trap. That's what happened to Mary. We miss Jesus' resurrection if we keep our eyes on the tomb and preoccupy ourselves with the best thoughts of why this had to happen to us. Get past it. Because no matter where you are, here's what I know. God is near. God will not walk out on you. Peter and John came with Mary. But they left her standing there in her grief by herself. Did you see that? But Jesus is a true friend. He'll do for you what he did for Mary. He'll walk in after everybody else has walked out. Hello? Hello? He's alive. And he comes back to help. He's faithful. He's got stockpiles of love and compassion. Jesus proves himself to be good. To the woman who waited and sorrowed and sought after him, even though she couldn't understand what had happened. Three days after the crucifixion, life looked pretty bleak for Mary. And all of those who put their hope in Jesus, when they found an empty grave and assumed there'd been a robbery. But she is so intent on looking at her confusion and trying to puzzle it all out that she doesn't turn around when she hears a voice behind her. Malachi chapter 3, verse 7, Israel's in dire straits. Ever since the time of your ancestors, God said, you've turned away from what I told you to do and didn't do what, it, what I said. Look at what he says to them. Return to me. I'll return to you. I won't leave you. But return to me. What that means is that God stands ready and waiting for those who will choose to turn towards him. Peter said, repent then and turn towards God. 
so that your sins can be wiped out. Why? So times of refreshing can come. Listen, there are seasons of our life when we know grief, when we know sorrow, when we know pain, when we know loss, when we know failure, when stuff just does not come together. It's real. But turn to God. Repent simply means to do a 180 degree turn, to stop going my way and say, God, I'm willing to turn like Tom Dorsey did, and I'm willing to go your way, and you link arms with Jesus, and he'll lead you into times of refreshing. Mary, he said. Oh, wait a minute, I know that voice. He's standing right there. For you and I, God, it means we turn towards God in the future He has planned for us. Because of Jesus, instead of one rooted in our past with our hurts, with our habits, with our hang-ups, I mean, I've got me into one doozy of a problem financially relationally hello socially spiritually god says we can fix that we can yep but here's the first step what's that you got to turn around and you have to see what i'm seeing I didn't tell you that all your problems evaporated. Here's what I'll tell you, though. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. And he will walk you through. Turn towards him. If you really listen, I'm going to tell you this. You'll hear your name called because he'll call for you. You say, that's eerie. Oh, friend. When Jesus calls, you won't freak out. You'll be so glad that he's there. Why? Because when I'm in crisis, God is near. Or don't you recognize Jesus because you don't know anything yet? Do you just not know that he's even there? Maybe this story is news to you today. But perhaps unlike Mary, you were invited to participate in the gathering this morning and you're visiting with us. Listen, I'm so glad you're here because I got good news for you. Jesus Christ died on a cruel Roman cross, not for his sins, but for yours and for mine. So that we could get reconciled to God. Because God, whom we have offended shaking our fists at and yelled at, wants a relationship with us. You say, why? God's always wanted a family. Family fights sometimes, you know. I know that none of you have ever experienced that. But hey, he wanted a family. And he is waiting for you He was waiting for you to show up this morning because he wanted to talk to you. Because, you know, you are no different than anybody else. Everybody I know on this planet, even the guys who deny that there is a God, they've all got this nagging sense of something. Why? Oh, because the Bible says that's what God did to you. He wired you up. Don't go for the evolution kibosh. God wired you up. It's why you are the way you are. You say, I don't like it. Then talk to the boss. Don't yell at me. Look at it. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate. Circle those words. And it's time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing for which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man can't find out, comprehend or grasp what God has done. What's the big plan from the overall, from the beginning to the end? But you've got this gut feeling that there's more to life than this. 
there's got to be more to life than working my guts out all week and watching TV and drinking beer on the weekend. And let me tell you this, you're right. God put eternity in your heart. You have this inborn instinct that longs for immortality. Why? Because when God wired you up, that's how he wired you up. Even though everybody dies, it always seems unnatural. It always seems unfair. And the reason we feel that way is because God wired us up to live eternally. So here's what he did when we screwed up. He made this life the dress rehearsal. You're going to spend far more time on the other side of death in eternity than you will here. This life is preparation for the next. Life on earth is a temporary assignment. Lord, remind me, the psalmist said, how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me, my days are numbered, that my life is fleeing away. To make the best of your life, then you have to remember two things. Number one, compared with this life, eternity is a really long time. Number two, this is your temporary residence. You are not intended to be here long, so don't get too attached. In fact, in order to keep us from getting too attached, God allows us to feel a significant amount of discontent and dissatisfaction with, you, with life. And you think it'll be better if you get that new boat. You figure it'll be better if you could get a new car. If you could just have another baby. Oh, God. If you... <laughs> hey, listen, the first one passed, but I had three after that. Oh, boy. Bless God Almighty, I am grateful, but I have three lovely girls. One of them's in the nursery. <laughs> the other one's in Halifax working on her master's program, writing her thesis. And the third one is up the road at another church with a, of a friend of mine enjoying Sunday morning without dad. Hallelujah. <laughs> God allows us to feel a significant amount of discontent and dissatisfaction. Why? To keep us looking for Him. That was His intention. He promised to come for us. He wired us to be people who look forward to His coming for us. There are God-shaped longings in you that will never be satisfied by anything this side of eternity. But don't ignore them. He's trying to get your attention. Let him have it. Give him your attention. We're not completely happy here because here is not where we belong. Hello? But there's something else we instinctively know too. And that is this, that if God has a place called heaven and it's as nice as everybody tells me, how do I get there? Well, the only way I know to get there is to compare myself with James. Because thank God I'm better than James. I deserve a go. Now you can tell the really good, the real people that are struggling because they pick Adolf Hitler, you know. I'm better than Hitler. I can't go to hell. But here's the trick. You know, you know that you don't deserve to go. Gut response. You know. You'll fight with yourself and tell yourself why you're better than he is or better than she is or, well, I've never done what they did. But inside there's this nagging doubt that that's not how this works. And you're right. It isn't. Romans 3, let's have a read. Can we read together? Can you follow with me? I mean, I'll read, but you got to follow, because if you go to sleep, it's worth nothing. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone. Everyone who believes, no matter who we are, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standards. We know we screwed up. 
Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. That's why he suffered. People are made right with God when they believe Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and didn't punish us in times past, for he was looking ahead and including us. He was looking ahead, including them or the people who are us, in what he would do in this present time. God's been thinking of you forever. He's had plans. Have you ever asked him what they were? You see, God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. He's a good God, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Listen, he says, I'll pay the credit card debt of your sin if you'll come. If you'll sit down and agree with me that you've messed up, Because you have. And if you doubt that you have messed up, ask your spouse. (laughs) Bible says this, that when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us. Now most people will not be willing to die for an upright person. Well, someone might be willing to die for a person who's especially good, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still a hot mess. Hmm. See, don't let this throw you, Jesus said to his disciples. You trust God, don't you? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, then trust me. There's plenty of room for you in Father's house. If that weren't so, I'd have told you I'm on my way to get a room ready. Would I have told you, rather, that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get a room ready, I will come back and get you so you can live where I can live. Now, Philip and his buddy are puzzled. Master, we have no idea where you're going. How do you expect us to know the way? And Jesus said, I'm the way. Like, follow me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to Father apart from me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him. You've seen him. Why? Because he's my dad. If you want to know who I look like, well, he's back there. He's got a beard, though. (laughs) It's my dad. Jesus said, you want to know what God looks like? Have a look. I'm the boy. (laughs) Philip said, Master, just show us the Father and we'll be content. Jesus looks at Philip. You've been with me all this time and still you don't know me? Maybe that's the problem today. You just don't know him yet. But that's why I told the stories today. So that you would get a glimpse of who he is. You say, but I need proof. The proof of the resurrection is in the people that you're sitting with. If you know some people who are genuine Christians, then you should be able to watch. They're not perfect. I'll just warn you of that. But I will tell you this. If you watch them... Jesus is changing them every day more and more into the person they should be than the person they used to be. Look around. The people who believe in Jesus, the Son of God, who believe that Jesus died a sacrificial death to pay down the debt, of all the stuff that I have done in rebellion against God, three days later he rises from the grave. Why does he have to rise? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And God said, i got to show them it's not your sins that you died for. It was theirs. He said, so come on. It's three days. 
let's get out of here. And he did. People who are Christians are ordinary people, just like you. Chosen to turn and ask God to come into their life to be their Lord and Master. And soon coming came. 2,000 years ago, the stone was rolled away. The stone was not rolled away so Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away so that we could see he was gone. To know today the tomb is empty and that a living, breathing, walking, talking Jesus, Mary's boy, is alive and prepared to offer and initiate a whole new level of life and relationship with God to anybody who will ask him. Friend, in all your discomfort, in all your... It's Jesus you're looking for. Not the boat. Not another relationship. And if you meet him, everything else will change. Because he's the game changer. Let's pray. Jesus, you put me on this planet for a purpose. And you rose again so that I could connect with it. Maybe you're in this room this morning and while I'm praying, you want to pray along with me and just pray this prayer in your heart while I do. Why don't you do that? Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to get to know you and learn to trust you. I want to walk in conformity to your design and desires because apparently you want the best for me. So I'm asking you today, Jesus, to come into my life. I surrender myself, whatever I am, whatever I have, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Jesus, today, I choose to turn towards you. I want a relationship with you. Forgive me of my past, my sin, and my rebellion. I want to be reconciled to you. I want to be empowered by your Holy Spirit. And I want to be changed in the per into the person you always dreamed I could be. Today, Jesus, I ask you to guide me and give me wisdom to recognize that you're near so I can walk hand in hand with you through this life and learn to live in obedience and build a better future for myself and those close to me. Jesus, today, I surrender myself wholeheartedly to your purposes because I want a life here and I want the one that you promised afterward too in jesus name i pray amen the lord is risen, He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. hallelujah let me do that one more time because we're going to run out of day soon the lord is risen, He's risen hallelujah. hallelujah david take it away amen let's stand I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need him is always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation to impart you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my heart now it's always funny with this song because the folks up here they don't want to do the hold you know I think we should do the hold
What do you think, Jim? Yeah. No, we're going to do the hold, okay? Yeah. Yeah, every time we're going to do the hold, just so everybody knows. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's new way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs through Jesus Christ the King. May the hope of all who see Him, the help of all who find. And none other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Father, we just are so grateful to be found in your house today, Lord. I rejoice. Again, I say rejoice, Lord, and we rejoice with you today. Bless your people. Have your hand upon them as they go and be with their families this weekend, Lord. And God, just bless. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless amen. you, folks. He lives. He lives. to impart and you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my I'm sure I thought, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> Good job, Dave. <laughs>